You have finally connected to the Roll for Crit podcast, the official podcast for RollForCrit.com. Watch, shop, play. I'm Will Keeler. I'm Jonathan Estes. I don't know what that means. Are we an internet service? Or yeah, we, uh... we're, we're dial-up. They spent like, actually 45 minutes just to get started this okay. video. That's how they used to have to play board games, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they, they, would have, they would do it by dial-up phone service. Yeah. And you would send your turn in to the internet. 56K modems. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. Uh, fun show today. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a real fun show in, in, in many different ways. <laughs> uh, some big news, some small news, a bunch of Kickstarter-related things, and then we're going to do a top 10 list. So uh, let's Let's get into it. First up, uh, Asmo Day. Oh yeah, the company formerly known as Prince. I don't know why I said that. Uh, <laughs> made another big announcement, sending shockwaves through the industry. Uh, they have a formed a exclusive relationship with Alliance Game Distributors. Uh, some people, if you're not in the industry, you don't know about the retail side of things. You may not be familiar with it. So basically, there are about five, I, I would say, major board game distributors. Uh, and Alliance now is going to be the only one allowed to sell Asmodee products, which includes Fantasy Flight, Z-Man, Plaid Hat. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Asmodee. Yeah, Asmodee, <laughs> Catan, uh, many and many others. Uh, and so that's one thing. So those other distributors won't have access to a large chunk of those games anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, and we know they are going to make more announcements towards the end of this month, supposedly, relating to their policies and the retail side of things. We don't know exactly what's going to come out of that. But it is a big deal because it definitely will affect those distributors and a lot of stores and how they do things. Um, Asmodee has been kind of doing stuff like this for a while now. We've been, we've been talking about for a long time on the show, they've started buying things up, and now they entered into this agreement. So it seems like they, they definitely have a grand master plan that's being put into effect here. Right, and we should say now that we are a retailer, so we don't want to comment too much on this on ourselves, but we'll post you to uh, two big threads, one on uh, Reddit, one on BoardGameGeek, where people are discussing it more, and you can hear different people's opinions from both retailers and uh, customers alike. Yeah, so uh, yeah, we're we're walking on eggshells a little <laughs> bit. Uh, we uh, did get our our. Uh, allowance to sell uh, Asmodee products back when they did the whole shift with online and, mm -hmm. and the little guy. But yeah, let us know what, what you're thinking in the comments about all this. But it's, def it's definitely a weird time for the board game industry. I, I feel like this is go good or bad. This is going to be looked back on as a very big deal. Well, no, I mean, this is definitely a really big shift. I mean, they, they own a lot of things. So uh, a lot, it's really a lot, curious to see yeah. how everyone moves forward. Alliance also, if you don't know, is they also do comic book distribution. They're, well, they're, they're partnered, partnered with, with Diamond. Diamond who uh, does the comics. And Diamond is in the comic industry. That's also a big deal because they have the exclusive rights to all the DC and Marvel stuff. So That's actually another thing you'll see a lot in the comics, which is interesting. It's just relating to that, relating this to the bubble, the comic bubble that popped back in... Uh, the 90s. Yeah. And uh, how, Di I think that, like some people said, Dimer was one of the few people who survived that, so. And that this this may be that. This may be a bubble. So uh, <laughs> buy a bunch of board games now, <laughs> hoard them in a, in a dark cellar, <laughs> a bomb shelter of some kind, and get ready for the coming apocalypse. <laughs> uh, or you know we'll we'll just we'll see what happens. So that's what that is. The cardboard apocalypse. Yeah, yeah. The the card apocalypse. <laughs> so uh, we'll see. We'll talk about this more when they make more announcements by hopefully the end of the month. Yeah. But uh, moving on to moving, maybe some better news. Yes, better better news before the apocalypse comes. Actually, some sur very surprising news that I thought the uh, Marvel Legendary Fantastic Four expansion, which has been long out of print. Uh, at least a couple of years. Mysteriously out of print. Well, yeah, mysteriously, <laughs> yeah. but we all kind of knew it was because Fox has the rights to Fantastic Four, mm -hmm. and Marvel maybe doesn't want to promote that as much. Disney, or, I would say. Well, yeah, the same thing, and honestly, in my mind. Uh, or maybe uh, they just maybe didn't have the rights for, for games mm -hmm. for something, some weird legal loophole like that. Well, they have announced they're, it's coming back into print, uh, sometime in the near future, and it, it's going to be exactly the same, no changes, same box, same edition, same price, uh, which is cool. I know it, for some people it will probably be a bummer because the expansion had been selling for upwards of, 
two hundred or more dollars. <laughs> I know there's. Yeah, I, I do not cry for you. I do not cry for. <laughs> well, that. Why, well, why not? Not even a little bit. No. <laughs> They're preying on the fact that like something that should be. It's not like. No, no. I'm saying I'm saying I'm sad for the people who bought them. Oh, those. Price. I thought you meant the resellers. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. <laughs> I, was, I, was like, I, I was talking about the. Uh, I was resellers. like, you heartless fiend. <laughs> no, no. I absolutely am sorry because I would usually be one of those people. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, yeah. I misunderstood. <laughs> I had. I saw someone online said that they traded someone their Fantastic Four expansion for a full playset of Netrunner and Lord of the Rings oh. LCGs. And this was like uh, like three weeks ago. <laughs> that person uh, must be hurting. But uh, at any rate, it will be back. I do wonder, does this mean... Is... Well, no, because it, it's interesting because I don't know if you, the next Legendary set is actually Legendary X-Men. Hmm. Yeah, they've continued to do X-Men stuff, so it's a strange... It's, it's... I, I, th I just think they're finally... It's a slow thing, and they're finally learning. However, we should note that, and it's sort of curious, maybe it's because this takes longer to develop, so this is before they decide to change their mind, but the Capcom versus Marvel in Infinite, I think it's called, the new one, leaked the roster, and... And it's garbage. No, well, <laughs> not a single uh, mutant. Right. Uh, or Inhuman. Or Fantastic Four, but I think nobody I don't think they've that. ever... Have they been in one? <laughs> I don't know. No, but I think that's important because Wolverine has been in every one is really the surprising. Yeah, so some, but some of course, weird stuff. It's a leak, so you can't take it take it with a grain of salt and, you know. All those legal things are weird. But at any rate, you can get that Fantastic Four expansion. If you don't have it, if you like Legendary, I do think it was a great expansion. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It was and one of the, maybe the, the first small one, actually. Yeah, it was. Yeah. And you were lucky enough to get it a day early, I remember. Too. It was really exciting. <laughs> I got it at Comic-Con. <laughs> uh, so if you get a chance, pick that one up. We recommend it. A uh, whole bunch of Kickstarter... Uh, related things. The 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 first thing uh, is just to mention, Zombicide Green Horde launched. Uh, it's 120 bucks. We don't really know anything about Zombicide, so we're not going to talk too much about it. Yeah, but. I do know, and it's sort yeah. of funny because I was talking with someone about it, and he said like, you know, he wants a back end stuff because we we're talking about Kickstarter exclusives, the pros and cons about them. Mm. But he's like. This comes with some. I mean, it's not actually them because they changed the names, but it's some Conan figures. Like guys from the Conan stories and stuff, but not Conan. The Conan was a Kickstarter exclusive for the previous, like, <laughs> Zombicide. Yes, they, they. So he's just like, why do I. I, I, I want to get it, but I want him. I got to get the whole set. It's they, just, they like to, like, link their campaign, it seems. There's always, like, they announce a game during the updates of the last one, and there's, yeah, like, promos. It's weird. But it's just like, <laughs> I want to back this, but I don't want. I want this exclusive because I want Conan too. I want, you know, I want the gang back together, you know. Well, so tell funny. me about a game that you do want to back that mm -hmm. is called. Rekka Mecca, <laughs> which is an awesome name. <laughs> well, this is a, a, a fun, small game, which is in essence, you're each building mechs and trying to beat each other. It comes with a lot of unique uh, pieces. You know, I think it was 20 unique arms and legs, uh, nine heads and cores, and the idea is you play different ones, and there's sort of a rock, paper, scissors element too. So like, this beats this, but they have different abilities, so they can block damage, or can be considered both melee or ranged. And looked like a fun, simple sort of game if you like mechs. And the other cool thing is if you have two copies, uh, you can actually do two, two uh, it's a 1v1 usually, but you can do 2v2. So that way, like, if you owned a copy to play just the other and I own one, but if we got together, we can then do more of a fun 4v4. Is there any, is there like a free-for-all or is it strictly a 2v2, do you know? They, it said a 2v2, but I wouldn't be surprised if they either make one or... Well, Somebody does. Yeah. <laughs> it goes for $25 for one copy, 45 for get two. So check that out, Recca Mecca. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Would you would you recommend it? Uh, <laughs> That's pretty good. Uh, uh, next, my my Kickstarter pick here is Escape the Dark Castle, uh, which has this really cool. Uh, black and white, kind of gothic horror, but more like an 80s D and D vibe in from the artwork and the feel. It's a cooperative. Uh, dungeon exploring adventure. Uh, everybody has a character, and you're going through a, a deck of cards. And as things come up, it may be a combat encounter, which involves everyone rolling different dice, trying to get certain symbols, uh, or it may be a decision you have to make, uh, some kind of an encounter, and you play through until you get to the end of the dungeon. Uh, it just uh, the art style looked really cool. Uh, the, I liked the theme. It sounded like a fun. Uh, casual cooperative experience did remind me of 
of oh, the one deck dungeon, which I backed the last uh, expansion when it went up, and the base with that. Uh, so I, I'm not sure how similar they are, uh, but it sounded like kind of a, a similar deal, although this one is multiplayer. That one, I think, focuses more on the solo experience. Um, so I like this one, uh, Escape the Dark Castle, that goes for $32 for the base set of that. Uh, and then... I feel, you know, it's been too long since we've had a Lovecraft game. Oh, <laughs> so long. <laughs> so, but this one actually sounded, I liked it. So what, what did, yeah. yeah, tell me about Carcosa. Yeah, so if you don't know, that's a place in, uh, in Lovecraft lore. And the idea is you're all cultists building Carcosa and then eventually waking the king in yellow. And what's cool about this is you're all, while well, you're all fighting each other, you're all building the same place. So you're each going to get gang tiles to either replace people's tiles if they're not protected or build it so you can make this unique map, which something we talked about how we like that sort of idea. We'd want to see like almost like suburbia, but everyone work on the same thing and just see what hilarious thing comes out of it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's really cool. And you, of course, there's worker placement and moving pieces and making sure you're, if you guys go too insane to get power and cast spells. It sounds like just this really fun, interesting tile mechanic. And also because the tiles could be secret, they have two sides because once they're flipped, I think they're protected. You could like play some tiles and wait until to flip them to get different abilities and stuff like that. So it did sound like a really fun, unique sort of tile map building take. Yeah, it looks cool, and it looked. I like that it's focusing on the, the king of yellow thing because I feel like that's n usually not the place they go for these games. It's nice to see a Lovecraft game that's not just Cthulhu fighting each other. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so and, and the gameplay sounded uh, fun and unique to complement that as well. Uh, Carcosa that one goes for thirty eight. Dollars if you back it. We're slowly increasing. I like that. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the next one al also is slowly increasing. Uh, so I have one, one more, and this is a little bit of a, a little bit of a cheat because it is not a Kickstarter Kickstarter. Ah. <laughs> it is a Fig kick, uh, Kickstarter. <laughs> Are you familiar with Fig? I actually am not. Uh, Fig is the crowdfunding platform started by Double Fine, the people who do you know Psychonauts yeah. and all those games. They uh, started their own where they do their own games on it as well as other select companies so not anybody can join it uh, but the people they make deals with do it and this one that actually did go up on there recently is a digital version of Flashpoint Fire Rescue uh, and the reason I thought it looked significant is because unlike a lot of digital versions of, of board games we see where you know it's the board mm -hmm. digital. Right. <laughs> uh, this really does look like a full-fledged video game overhead. Like, uh, so I assume that instead of just the flat board, you actually have like the house or something. Exactly. You have a three-dimensional uh, house from kind of an overhead, kind of an isometric perspective. You're moving people in and out. You see the explosions, special effects. There's full animation of your characters and all that stuff. Uh, so I think that's really cool. I, I appreciate that. Uh, and it seems like it just seems like a fun, a fun take on the game. It's a it's a cartoony art style. Uh, it's not being made by Double Fine themselves. It's uh, another company called Retro Epic Software. Uh, fift <laughs> only fifteen dollars. Yeah, for this for the digital version. So that's cool, especially for a good. Uh, Co-op game. You want you want to make sh you want to have a good-looking environment for your online interactions mm -hmm. with people. I don't. It's that's kind of interesting. To, you don't usually see board games on Kickstarter. Is the big deal, right? It's I, I don't know if we're ever going to see other platforms like Indiegogo. Well, or, I think it all depends on the kind of thing. I think that's what sort of happened. I feel Kickstarter's more for like business kind of products. Um, like Indiegogo, is it Indiegogo? I don't know. There's one that's more for like if you need help with a medical bill or something. But that's Go not fund the, me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This, this is not the time for that. Kids. It's not the time for that. <laughs> uh, a few comments from the Meeple Gallery. Oh yeah. Uh, that we'll get through before we get into our final segment. Um, last week we did talk about the, the Spiel de Jahres uh, nominees, and Miklos Fitch pointed out that at least one of them, King Domino, is available some places in the U.S. And I believe, in fact, we're gonna we're grabbing a copy. Well, of yeah. That. I've been able to grab a copy of that and escape. Exit. Uh, exit. I, I keep calling it escape. Uh, I need a thesaurus. Uh, but, so that would be nice. I did try to look for the other ones. Uh, the Raiders of Lost Sea, I saw the Chiefest was 160, so I'm like, I'm going to wait. I think it's because it's getting a new printing yeah. soon. And the other one, Magic I, just, Maze I literally just couldn't find. Yet. Magic Maze or the... Uh, uh, El Dorado. Yeah, and we already have uh, terraforming. Yeah, but we're trying to hopefully get to play all those Spiel des games, and maybe you are as well. Um, Raphaelis13 
was confused by the convergence of Transformers and Splatoon. You want to explain that for him? <laughs> what did I? You were wearing the T-shirt. <laughs> oh well, there was a, a Splatoon. That he used to hold these. Uh, con what do they call the contest? Splatfest. Splatfest. Thank you. <laughs> and they actually made a deal with uh, Transformers, and it'd be uh, Autobots versus Decepticons. And Decepticons won with a uh, fair reason. And if they, uh, I think it was PAX Prime, one of those two. Uh, it was a, I'm pretty sure it was a PAX event. They actually made shirts of the like a red shirt with Autobot symbol with Splatoon spot or a purple shirt with a Septicon symbol spot. And so I got one on eBay because this is like I like Splatoon. I love Transformers. I mean, you know, it was just like. Yes, I need that shirt. <laughs> so now you know. Now and you know. conveniently, I'm wearing a Splatoon shirt. We're just we're going all in on Splatoon this month. Nintendo <laughs> may have paid us off a little bit. I wish. I wish. <laughs> all right. So. Actually, hold on. Uh, if Nintendo, if you're listening, make more Splatoon gear. I had to hunt for this. I yeah. shouldn't have. They're not listening. Um, we also, uh, going back to our top ten lists that we did a few weeks ago, we asked, I wanted to know what Rico Cordova's, uh, what his disliked games were that he didn't, he didn't elaborate on. Oh, he, boy. he went into full detail. I got to say, Rico, I think the problem may be with you. Uh, <laughs> I won't read his whole, he went, he went through the whole thing, but he said uh, games, he would, games he disliked or would never play again. Mm -hmm. Mysterium, The Resistance, Hanabi, Cosmic Encounter, Ark of Horror, and King of Tokyo. Wow. How can, I mean, what do you, come on, all those games? Come I, on. I mean, I can make up some points for disliking some of those, but man, he hated your list. <laughs> I you know. know. I thought it was going to just be my entire well, list. Well, most of your list was he never played them. <laughs> so. uh, I mean, that's to be fair. I remember, I mean, I will say my list isn't the top 10 best games. I will admit that. The best we got was two games he thinks are okay. Sherlock Holmes and Legendary. They're okay. <laughs> All right, keep giving us your feedback. You can watch those videos. Uh, and finally, uh, Jamie Aspinall, which sounds like a drug I'd get at the pharmacist, uh, commented about the new Dead of Winter uh, Warring Colonies thing and said the only problem is you need the Long Night and the base set. I wish it was a standalone expansion because I don't have any of the versions yet, uh, but I'm going to buy one for now. Yeah, it is It, it is some, somewhat of a hurdle. It's uh, interesting that they have an expansion. Well, that do we know the price of the... Uh, I, the, I think it's somewhere in like the 20 to 30 Yeah, range. because I remember being smaller when we first... To be fair, it is... You can use it as an expansion with only one set. It's just if you want to do the two colonies fighting mode, you need Right, both. and I just feel it, it's better for them. I mean, I understand where he's coming from, but at the same time, it's better to have a smaller, cheaper thing for the people who have two big boxes instead of giving them, like, great, I have another... Because remember when you got that box, you're... The, the long night, and you're like, oh man, I gotta, this is, this is heavy. It's a big fella. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so uh, just food, but, food for thought. Uh, thanks for the mm -hmm. comments. All uh, right. We appreciated all of them. Why don't you introduce our Yeah, thing. so as we've been talking about the story, we've talked about things like you just received this war of mine mm -hmm. and the fallout, which is one of my favorite properties. And we got uh, discussing what are some properties that aren't at least either board games or at least modern board games, recent board games that we really want to see come out. Yeah. So uh, we made a list. Uh, I don't know about for you, but I made sure that these, I tried to make them so there weren't things that came out if they had a board game, they weren't recent, or I'm not counting monopolies or clues, you know, that are just quick reskins. Right, yeah. Uh, there are a couple things on my list that do have iterations of board games, but I'll, I'll no, detail yeah. exactly what that, what that means and why I included them still. Um, we, did, we did a long time ago, we had a segment on the show where we, I think we threw back some ideas of properties we wanted to see adapted. So uh, I didn't, like, didn't, didn't rewatch it or anything, so we may repeat ourselves. I, I mentioned we're also going to say what we think would be made as a game for it. So like if we said this show, it's because we think this is how... Yeah, top, top 10 properties we want to see as a game and, and how we think they should work as a game. Right, and that's why. There are some things I think I would like to see as a game, but either A, uh, I don't know how to make it as a game, or B, there are a couple, they're, they're not on my list, but like I would say like the cross my mind was like Cowboy Beep Up, but like, I don't want a game, I just want it to be almost an expansion for Firefly. <laughs> like, I feel like that already fits it. Interesting. Um, so, like, a lot of these things aren't just, like, that's one of the reasons why they might, something might not be on my list is because either I think some, there's already something for it. Or, I mean, I'll say I could have easily made a top 50 for this list. Oh, of course. <laughs> like, these 10 that I say are, I, they're so... And I bet 
if someone could say something in the in the like in the <laughs> comments and be like, actually, yeah, that'd be on my list. I turned around and looked at something on the set and saw something I thought should be on my list <laughs> just before we started recording. I'm really curious uh, now what, what, it, what it was. I'll tell you later, but it was yeah. So I, I I'm of the belief that most properties could be made of oh no I'm not, game. I mean so this is yeah with enough tweaking I definitely agree. So with if that. we'll do a part two maybe if people if people want to hear yeah. more and I also think if if so you say something that's on the other person's list, you should just jump in. Oh, and absolutely. Because I feel like less. I though I would be shocked. I think there's only one thing on my, two things on my list that I think could be on yours. All right. Well, shock me. Let, give me All your right. number ten. Actually, no, three. This is my number. Give 10 them your number. 10. My number ten <laughs> is Hannibal. And I think it a, be a fun trader game, but I would think it'd require really something to make it stand up from Resistance or something like that because I think. The show is that kind of good. Almost, I think everyone should know who the traitor is, but you have to gather evidence. Specifically, you're referring to the TV show yes. more so than the book or the right. movie. <laughs> yes, I'm referring to the TV show. I should say that. Thank you. Yeah. But I think the other idea I came up with would be better. And I guess this sort of counts as be a dinner mystery. Mystery dinner. Sort Murder of mystery event. dinner yeah. party theme Because, I mean, party? I mean, come on. Hannibal, the <laughs> cooking of this stuff. But Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's a great one. <laughs> I, love, I mean, I'm a but huge Hannibal fan. The reason why it's my number 10 is because if you watch the show, I just feel the show does such an amazing job compared to everything else with, with the characters, especially Hannibal, of how he really is a bad guy. But, like, honestly, he's, he, I really do feel that actual charm coming from him. Yeah. So I feel like that's why, like, it can't be a simple just reskin of, you know, like a... a I'm just blanking resistance. on resistance or something. You know, I really want to have that. You take that extra initiative to make that traitor a reasonable, you know, interesting thing somehow. Like, yeah, yeah, I, I can see that. More, more of that, more of a negotiation element, maybe something. Some yeah, point. like that's why it's my number ten. It, it's something that requires, I think, a really good mechanic to push, push it through. Uh, do you want to do your... Was that not on your list? Or I just it's not on my list. Okay. No, yeah. I'll, I'll let you know. Don't worry. Because but, that one's possible because I know you're the one who turned me on to the show. Yeah, great, great choice. Uh, are, do you want to do your number nine now? Are we doing the two and two thing or how does that uh, work? No, do you, <laughs> because this isn't really as big of a deal. I feel. Okay, I'm with you. All right. Oh, you know what? I should bring it up first. Uh, my, all right, I have a few curveballs in here and my number That's 10 fine. is maybe the curviest of the balls. <laughs> my, I think my nine will be my curveball. But. That's the title of this episode. Um, my number 10 is... My voice just cracked. The Odyssey, the oh. <laughs> the Homer written b epic tale of the Odyssey uh, by the Bard himself. Uh, this is you know this is the essential the hero's journey, right? It's no, I think that makes sense because uh, while we, we've seen, I'm sure we've seen Odysseus appear in a game. And maybe there have been one or... I can't think off the top of my head. There are but. plenty of Greek mythology-based games. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> I don't know that there are any really based on specifically this tale. And the way I thought... I kind of saw it going out, playing out is... Really, I almost want to say possibly as a solo experience because I don't know how other players... I mean, you could be like people on Odysseus's crew, I guess, and his ship or whatever, maybe. That could work. But I feel like some something with... Uh, a storytelling element to it because that's the spirit well, of the of the story. Well, it might be really cool. Obviously, so like a, it's almost like an RPG, like but the DM is Odysseus, mm -hmm. and the other players are, and so he might have to decide to kill them off. Then also, <laughs> definitely so that becomes maybe something along the lines of like maybe a Tales of the Arabian Nights, right? Ask uh, game. No, I, I think that can, that could be really good. So that's my number ten. All right. Uh, now this is my number nine. It's a weird one, but I think it could work. Is actually based on the TV show Psych. Okay. It's a. I've never watched the show. Yeah, so. it's, a, it's a crime <laughs> procedural show, but more in the much more comedy oriented. Uh, it's a guy who pretty much pretends to be a psychic, but he, he just has really good observation skills. And the reason I think this would make a really fun sort of party deducing game because in the show a lot of times there's a lot of jokes in there. Like he'll always like introduce his his part his partner as like a silly nickname or something. Mm -hmm. And when he whenever he gets a hint and like tries to tell everyone he'll be like, "Oh, I'm sensing something." He always always hand to the, you know, <laughs> temple. So I think you could have this sort of fun deducing party game to have together and be like, "Oh, wait, I'm getting something." <laughs> so no. maybe like a bluffing game. Yeah, like I think you could have like this really sort of this fun observation. And it actually is the show ended. Oh, I can't remember a while ago, but they're getting a movie this winter, which I'm really shocked. Okay. Also, they have to be a pineapple included because every episode had a pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking, would it be cool? Would it make sense if it was like 
the player has a card and maybe the person who's the psychic that either looks at it or doesn't, but and either they're guessing what it is or they know what it is. Right. The that's a try like, I just feel like the whole point would be not as much for focusing on the win lose, but almost just to get that, that, that silly aspect from the show. Yeah, that sounds cool. Psych. All right. Uh, my number nine. This, this one was a tough one because based, I, I wanted to get something f- uh, from uh, Miyazaki in there. Oh, my God. I didn't think about that. <laughs> uh, and I, I kind of was, I, I was struggling to come up with which See? Movie. This is what's going to happen, I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which movie would make the best game. The one I landed on was Totoro. And the way, the way I was thinking of it was it would be less of a direct adaptation of the film and more like... P- players, maybe you're trying to compete to like gr- grow a garden or something, or because that's so much the theme that of the movie. That sounds adorable. And like maybe the, you know, the Totoro comes by once in a while on the cat bus, and you use them to like help you build and grow and stuff like that. I like that. <laughs> I wanted to find something for Spirited Away. I was like a, a bathhouse tycoon simulator. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's gonna be like one of those like you know the game like with the pie that hits you in the face that you hit go around. It's that, but with no face, like put, giving him food until he like it goes crazy. Oh, okay, good, good. <laughs> Call, so there's a bonus one. Uh, so that was my number nine. Was my neighbor Totoro? Nice. I, no, I like that a lot because I think, at the very least, that would just be a beautiful game. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, apparently my thing decided to go to the clock. My, my number eight is a clock. <laughs> All right. Uh, my number eight is one I'm sure you could have guessed on mine is the Super Sentai and Power Rangers series, and this I think obviously should be a deck building game. And like many others, I think one of the ways it would work that would be really fun would be like each you can do sets would be of the teams and just like you know how legendary like there's the Avengers group and the symbol like they would have their team symbol but they could also be like for every Red Ranger you play that way it makes sense if you want to mix and match and make some weird ones and I just think because there's been I think 40 at this point teams in the Sentai-verse at Power Rangers I'm, where I think we're, at, we're a little behind uh, I think that would be just a lot of fun and just all these weird different cards and because honestly if you actually watch uh, the Sentai series some of them are, are like actual joke series like they're literally meant to be just jokes you can make some really weird combinations and stuff no that seems that seems like a, a perfect fit for it i mean i know we just want it to be legendary probably well i mean I think it could it, have its own it could twists. have its own just because it has so much that's why yeah yeah no there's there's a ton yeah it's interesting the deck building isn't the first place i would go but it does make a lot of sense it's just the, i think because a deck building easily fits like whether it's dc or legendary just when you have 40 care over, right. you know, <laughs> e- well, 40 teams, and each one has at least three to five, you know, you know. And the combat thing, it, mm-hmm. it, it makes sense. Uh, my number eight is another one that I sort of struggled with because I don't know what type of game it should be. I just know it should exist. No, no, no. Is The Matrix. Uh, it just seems, you know, this is such a huge sci-fi property and one of my favorites. And I feel like there For are... good reason. Yeah. There are so many ways you could tackle it because you have the Animatrix, you have some comics. Oh, no. Absolutely. I mean, I could see either as an RPG. I mean, that's, an easy, that's the easy one, I feel. Um, it could be like almost two rooms in a boom, almost, but it's like someone's Aiden Smith infecting people, you know. You yeah. can go a lot of different There's places. There's a lot. There. The one thing I was thinking was would be cool is if maybe if someone is like the operator on the outside and someone else is in the matrix and there's some kind of an interplay or there's like phases where you're going in and out of the matrix. Uh, you could you could be like two boards combat. like one is actually in the matrix one's the outside world and that person's like the one it could be like one be all and that person like is slowly moving robots in the real world while also controlling the agent the other. Yeah. Yeah. I could definitely totally. You could do some cool stuff. Get on that. All right. Next. <laughs> My next one, this one's sort of like, I'm not sure exactly how the game would work, but I think this mechanic is just, they fit each other, is Fire Emblem, the series. And I think it should be a legacy game. Because when I think of Fire Emblem, I think of how you could lose units forever. Yeah. And I just feel like that fits the legacy game perfectly. Yeah, that's pretty good. And, <laughs> I just think that, and I've been playing the Fire Emblem app, and I actually really like it, even though mechanically it is a free-to-play gotcha which that has its own issues. But in terms of just seeing all the heroes together, and we know we're getting the Fire Emblem Warriors game coming up, I just think a legacy game somehow where you have to actually tear up, so you're like, oh God, I'm gonna actually tear up that Marth card. And just that terror. No, that seems perfect. That's 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 really that's really. I mean, Fire Emblem is a board game already in digital form, but yeah, as a as a legacy game, it makes too much sense. <laughs> <laughs> they definitely should do that. That's that's a good call. Uh, uh, this is my number seven now. Mm-hmm. Is 
The Shining. <laughs> the uh, I guess you could yes. say the book, but uh, or the movie, I, I guess. Uh, and I, I did. I was. This was. I was another one where I was. I wanted to do a Stephen King one, and he has so many that you could probably adapt. But I went with The, the Shining. Uh, my my thoughts were first of all, you have that hotel, which I feel like is such a great layout for a board game uh, so, sort of, or it could even be like maybe a mansion's betrayal type thing you could easily work in a reason why those rooms would be shifting in some the way room, the elevator shoots out blood I think <laughs> rooms changing and disappearing isn't far-fetched. Exactly. And what I was kind of thinking is maybe it's like a 1v all where one person is Jack going crazy uh, and every and and maybe the other and maybe then you have uh, someone could be uh, Shelley Duvall, the kid or and uh, maybe the groundskeeper who comes back. That or that could be an outside element of the game. Some kind of a, a Hell, it doesn't have to be in the act. Game. Maybe it could just be like the story but another family goes in or something. Yes. That way you don't feel nearly as Attached somehow. That could definitely, that would definitely be also a good one, I think, and makes sense because the movie is already kind of a loose adaptation. This could be another set in that world, sort of. Uh, so that was that was. All that. right. My next one is Gundam, and I think it should be like either a miniatures or card war game. I mean, my favorite series of the Gundam isn't the G Gundam or the Wing, and yes, I will fight on that. <laughs> but is the really the Wing is more closely related. This G Gundam really is the weird one out. But is the like the central universe where it's actually the war? And honestly, my favorite ones isn't the main ones. It's these spin-offs where it's like the story of a, of like this small platoon on Earth or something, or even this kid. It's like, like there's only two suits and they're barely in it, but it's this kid talking with a Zeon pilot who's spying in a colony. Hmm. Like, it's really interesting. But what I like is because they have all these mechs, all these units, and I just want to see them on this cool artwork or miniatures and moving around, and, like, you can build your team and fight each other. It just seems like it has it has the... the it seems like a no-brainer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've, you've clearly got the groundwork. And this is one that there is a card game, I think, before, but I'm pretty sure it's only in Japan, and, you know, and just, you know, we could we could do better. <laughs> I'm with you. I, I, like, I, like, I always wanted to build a Gundam model. Oh, oh, and that's the other thing. The <laughs> miniatures, I feel like you already got the building market there. Uh, my number six is one that I, I we have talked about together in real life mm -hmm. uh, and is, has recently right. enjoyed a revival, Samurai oh. Jack. That's my number five. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, we nailed Love it. Love it. Love it. <laughs> See, we shared one there. So um, and, and close, too. I'm really... My, yeah. uh, my, my uh, I know one of my ideas was it would be like... A, a head-to-head -head dual game where oh, Jack, Jack v. Yaku. I was thinking a uh, asymmetrical game, obviously. Yeah. But I think the way I saw it was you'd be fighting for things and like um, descent. You know how descent, depending on who wins a certain scenario, it's either this item becomes good or bad. It had that element. It wouldn't follow the story exactly, but it'd be like if you can capture this. Like for example, um, for and we biking our name. Ashy, Ashy. <laughs> Ashy. Like, who would win? Maybe this point, like, gets control of her, whether she's the her demon form or her good form, like that kind of stuff. But it'd be, it wouldn't. I don't think it'd be the same. So the way Jack works would be different. The way, uh, you know, um, a coup, a coup, like almost <laughs> like uh, you know. Then it could also work like a Risk. I just realized the the Star Wars Risk game. Mm, where you have that multiple be, yeah. different like fronts and yeah, different things think about going that on. Just now. I was thinking like all, maybe even like a Netrunner sort yeah, of. Yeah, no. But well, I, that's the asymmetrical. Like even yeah. though they have decks, they're, they're actually very But different. I definitely feel like a head-to-head -head dueling card game is the perfect environment no for question. it. No uh, question. I like, mean, just it's got to be 1v1. I don't think you can do yeah, it. Yeah, like, like you could try to do like, oh, someone's the Scotsman or something. No, but I just I don't it's think really, it comes down to those two characters. It I does, think. absolutely. Yeah, so... Samurai Jack, that would be an awesome I'm one. really glad. Uh, so do you actually want to do your next one since my five was that? Yeah, so I'll do my number five. Uh, my number five is uh, I wanted to do a Quentin Tarantino thing. Mm -hmm. I thought I, I was going to do Reservoir Dogs, but then I was like, well... There's, we sort of have, like we have Bang and uh, Cash and Guns. It sort of is a thing already. Uh, so I said uh, The Hateful Eight. Ooh. And basically, so, uh, similar to what you said. Does with, one uh, person sit underneath the table until you're... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What was, the, what was the first one that you... Uh, that the was? Hannibal trailer. Yeah, like Hannibal. Uh, I think you, you got to go some kind of a sort of hidden role esque, resistance esque, uh, mystery deduction game where people have hidden agendas. And you're trying to figure out who's doing what, and just that atmosphere. And maybe even there is a board because 
there, cursing is mandatory. There's something about that atmosphere of being in that cabin and surrounded by snow that's oh, yeah, the no. perfect setting for a game, I think. I can definitely feel that. I mean, because a board game is being... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And maybe there's murder. Yeah, I, no, I like that one a lot. <laughs> that's a good one. Uh, my number four is Gravity Falls. And Ooh. I think this should be a Sherlock Holmes or Time Story thing. If you haven't watched the series, I really suggest you do. I think it's great. And one of the reasons, and why it also translates into a board game really well, if you watch it, those guys do amazing puzzles and codes and, sh and stuff in there. It's, it's nuts. Like, it's just asking for like a Sherlock Holmes, like looking at it and just seeing like this amazing decipher like cypher you have to solve out and just find this weird story maybe the main villain returns i don't know i think it just it'd be so cool and it was such a short-lived series that, and for a good reason you know it ended on its on uh, on its terms which is one of the most bittersweet things you know you can feel i have yet to watch any of it except for that one with weird al <laughs> oh that's right <laughs> the D-esque one which i enjoyed so yeah i can't comment but yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, if you sure. watch it, there's so many things you wouldn't. If you look online, there's all these videos like, "What if this? This is a symbol for this." Like when the show was going on, and this translates to this. So I just feel like it. It it would fit so well in that kind of everyone working together trying to solve. That just made me think of another good one. Anyway, <laughs> I'm sure we have a bunch. <laughs> all right. My number four is uh, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, <laughs> and. I do think there's, required. there's a lot of things. Yeah, you could do. There are a bunch of like Discworld board games. I think you could do some funny stuff with that. But I, I was thinking a role-playing game or another storytelling kind of game, or even maybe some kind of a party game because humor has to be d obviously a big element. Oh, of oh it. absolutely. Uh, but I feel like an RPG would be good because I think there there is a funny and fun universe in there, and to have an RPG where you could, where it's more absurdist and like the rules could be broken a lot more, I think would be a really fun thing to do. Uh, and there, there was a text adventure. Like maybe there, I didn't look it up. Maybe the, it seems like, because it's been around since the 70s, it seems like there would have been a Hitchhiker's Game of some kind at some point, but I don't know if, if it exists or not. But a modern version. All right. Fine. So Next for you. My number three is probably the most obvious of mine. Okay. It has had iterations of board games in the past, but they're all like, are, I would say like my my Jurassic Park 3 game kind of deal, mm -hmm. or has for Monopoly, is, probably because it's owned by them, Transformers. Now this, I could see going a lot of different ways, just because th there's so many different versions. There's the movie version, there's the original G1 version, there's the different TV shows, there's the comic books. There's so many different versions, just Optimus Prime alone, you know. <laughs> so, like, you could do a deck builder, maybe a miniatures game where there's all the different robots, because that makes sense since this is, let's face it, Transformers was made to sell toys. So you almost want to have that yeah. miniatures thing going on. Yeah. But, like, I just want something good for it. <laughs> you know? Are there, Transformers isn't part of, like, Hero Clicks, or is it? I'm sure it is. What isn't yeah, part of Yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> but, I, yeah. I don't want something in packs. I'm no. going to say this. None of my list is TCG, because I... I'm just not a fan of that. I understand. And yes, I did bring up how I'm also playing that Fire, Fire Emblem <laughs> game that is in essence that, but yeah. I want, you know. I'm with you. Yeah, Transformers for sure. It's definitely, it's, it deserves it at this point. And I yeah. think, that I want, I can't, deck building or yeah, miniatures battle. I mean, it's definitely the one out of all of my lists I do think would make more sense in Legendary if we were to bring it up. But I do think because there's so much, it could deserve its own. Uh, my number three is also one that has existing board games. Some very recent, but I, hmm. I, it doesn't have what I want. Okay, I'm interested. Uh, and so it is Harry Potter. Okay, no, you know what? That's it. And, and I actually want to go into that, but I do want to bring up the, the recent game. Yeah, well, let's start there. There is okay. that, the deck building game that just came out recently from USAopoly, uh, which I have played and is fine as a deck building game. Uh, but what I, what I really want is the full scale, uh, like fantasy flight style, uh, th very thematic. Hogwarts simulating battles with missions and a campaign. Well, actually, yeah, here are my two things. Upgrades, you're playing as different class members. That's what I want. One, <laughs> I actually think they should make one that's like, uh, you go through all seven years of school. Two, and this has to do with the recent game, is I really, and I'll admit this, I put two games on here who could fall into this strategy, and it, it's the problem with it. I have a problem with live action adaptations into board games. Because I feel like when they take a picture and put it in, it, it, uh, nine times out of 10, it feels lazy. Yeah. 
and like it doesn't you're taking the picture just for the sake to have a picture of that character like you can't like artwork you can make a new piece that would fit whatever the title of the card is or something or because you've drawn superman so many times you could probably find a piece of artwork that fits it I think it's so much harder for when you do live. That's why I really don't like it when you don't. When yeah. You just yeah, which is what the, the Harry Potter deck building game does. And I feel like the there's so many great illustrations in the Harry Potter books. Oh, I love the covers. I though. know like every region has different covers, but I feel like you could do a lot with that style. And it, yeah, it, it just seems like a, it's, it, it deserves more games. You could even do like there could be like a Quidditch game. There's a lot of different <laughs> that things is, you I, could I do. I feel like I would want that to be a dexterity game of like <laughs> yeah, playing it. <laughs> yeah, could, that could be cool. Uh, but I want I really want the all encompassing like the imperial assault of Harry Potter games. You know, that like covers covers it all. Uh, so that's. No, I, I completely understand, three. yeah. All right, so my number two is Ghost in the Shell. Now, I actually haven't seen the movie. <laughs> I actually am, though, a big fan of both the manga and the TV series. Uh, so I feel this would work amazingly either as Descent or, like, um, I'm totally blank blanking on uh, uh, Specter Ops. Spec Ops. Spec Ops. No, you were right, Specter Ops. Yeah, I was thinking Spec Ops, and I'm like, no, wait, that's wrong. I'm usually wrong. <laughs> I'm so used to correcting you. <laughs> I said the wrong one. Go and that's sort of like the one v all style, and just because it's they're sort of detective with hackers, it'd be really cool that the one can choose in the beginning whether he's like he's the the puppet man or whether he's laughing. You know, like choosing one of the main villains, and they have different abilities. And I just think it would be a lot of fun choosing because the, the, there's a lot of cool stuff there. Yeah, I mean, it's, I, it's another thing I don't have a lot of experience with, but it is an awesome aesthetic and a really cool... I mean, it's the Android Netrunner slash universe. Cyber, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, cyberpunk. Yeah, cyberpunk. Yeah, love all that stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, all right, so my number two is one that it definitely could have been on your list. I know you also want it. No, well, no, I will say that there are plenty of things on my list. Like, I will say one of, that's not on my list is Splatoon. It almost made it, but... Let's, let's, not, get, let's not get into what's not on our list okay. right now. <laughs> um, uh, is Lock and Key, oh, which we've talked about God, many times before. About, yeah. About, uh, this, so this is the comic book series uh, by Joe Hill, son of Stephen King. And there is a Lock and Key card game from Cryptozoic. It does not do it justice. Really is, it really is just... Basically, a pasted on a theme. Uh, again, what I want is or the Mansions of Madness esque. Uh, oh yeah. Uh, at least in in look and feel. Exploring this, the thing that's really cool about Lock and Key, if you don't know, they have these different. There's many different keys, and each one has this cool ability. Mm -hmm. So they could like maybe it opens a door to anywhere, or it opens somebody's head, and you can look inside their brain. Uh, uh, and so the idea of being able to go throughout a mansion, and try to find those keys. Well, not only that. We know, like, you see one story of these kids, which, of their horrific journey through their mm -hmm. life there. Mm -hmm. But we know, and they talk about how they see st other people who've lived in the house and how they've been able to deal with the keys. And I just feel that'd be perfect to have different missions in different world times. Like, one of them could be the mansion, like, with them. Or one could be when they're during the Civil War or something. You could do so much. I absolutely agree. I can't believe yeah. I forgot Lock and Key. <laughs> uh, the other thing that I really, I definitely think is that I, I would want it to be fully cooperative. And there's sort of these, like, dark shadow forces. And I think those should be, it should be a game-controlled component, I think. Oh, that actually reminds me, with my Ghost and Shell, I'm like, that also, because it's cyberpunk, like, an app. You know, oh yeah, yes. apps, apps are always good for all games. <laughs> all right, so all right, your number uno. My number one. I mean, I'm pretty sure I know what it is. What is it? Well, I'm curious. Unless you're it? not, the only reason you wouldn't put it is because there are games that exist already. It is not that. Okay, so then I don't know. What it is. <laughs> In my number one is Destiny. Okay. The reason behind this is if you, if you haven't played the game Destiny before, it's a first-person shooter, and Honestly, their game at the beginning, they weren't that well, didn't do that well in the story. But the difference is, there was something called the Grimoire cards. It was like on an app, which this bothered me a bit, that you had to go through an app, not through the game, to find this background information, was amazing. They had written all this beautiful lore. I mean, you can watch all these YouTubers who have made videos just on like what, this exotic weapon. Like, it's not just a good weapon. It has a story about how the person's father died and he picked up the weapon to duel and kill the murderer. Like, it's all this great stuff. And I just feel like 
and to bring it into a game might be where you can you take advantage of that and maybe go back to some of those battles or maybe even make an RPG and you can just like in the game but build your class in more interesting ways. I just feel that lore is just sitting there on a shelf. <laughs> and that's why it's just my number one. Waiting to be plucked. <laughs> and so well, so why didn't you choose Godzilla? <laughs> uh, well that was one of the things was one, it had a recent game and I was just like yeah. and two Remember when I mentioned uh, Cowboy Bebop? I'm like, I almost just want it, even though they have their version oh, of it. Like King of Tokyo? King of Tokyo Rampage. Like, I'm like, mm. it's almost a kaiju. I was thinking as like an honorary would be Evangelion, Pacific Rim, Godzilla, but not as a game, but almost just as bonus characters in them, like somehow. Like, got it, got it. All right, fair. So, so uh, Destiny. Yes, number, number I think. One. And because I think they have, and that's why, compared to all the rest, they have the stuff they haven't been utilizing yet. And that's why it's my number one. <laughs> Sort of a funny reason. Yeah, they could do a, a Halo game. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> um, my number one, I also went with a video game. Uh, I, I had to pick something from Nintendo because like, they're my favorite company. I, I, it, was, it was hard narrowing down which one I thought would be the best pick. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I finally ended on the one that I, almost, I was hesitant to say because I, I want to design this game. <laughs> I don't want anyone else to do it before <laughs> I can. Uh, it's Pikmin. Uh, of, all, of all their games, I mean, it is an RTS, basically, and it seems like a natural fit to a board game for, for me. No, this is one we've actually been talking about for a while, you know. You've always been like, oh, I, if it made a game like this, you know. It's, it seems like a I'm not be, giving any hints. Yeah. You know, this is your... Well, it would be a great... Um, I see it as a competitive strategy game. There could be cooperative modes, possibly, but with Pikmin, there's a built-in time limit. Uh, you have uh, multiple days to get parts back. Uh, so I would love to see kind of a randomized map, maybe, where you have to compete to get to certain spaceship parts first, or fruits, or whatever you're looking for. And and there could, it, with that built-in time limit, you could have a longer game, a shorter well, game, not only day, that, night what cycle. What could be really interesting is with the enemies, you can maybe make it so you might be forced to work together at some time, so you could be like, look, I won't go for that piece if you help me take out this uh, bulb. Bulb orb. Bulb orb. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of things you could do with, you know, you have all these tiny Pikmin and you have tokens to represent them maybe and you, you like sacrifice them to clear things. I feel like that could be a really cool strategic element. And of course, because the different colors have different abilities, you can make some fun weird tiles there be like, you can need blue to cross this tile or something. So that was my one. I, the one I, I looked behind and saw the Luigi's Mansion figure, I thought that would also be a cool <laughs> game. There's so many Nintendo properties. I mean, no, I mean, honestly, like I said, I said Splatoon, but to make the Platoon list, that's sort of a fun territory control thing. But there are a lot of things that could be, I mean, you said in the beginning, but these are just our top ones. Like, honestly, my, like I said, my number one and two are because I love their world so much. And as a theme-heavy guy, those are the worlds I just want to dive into. Yeah. And a lot, a lot of mine also were like, they finally made games of them like Buffy and, <laughs> and Firefly I couldn't do. Or well, like, no, that's why thing. Fallout was not on <laughs> right. Mine. That would If Fallout wasn't announced, I think that would be my number one. So... Those are our lists for now. If you have licenses that you think should be made into games, tell us about it. Or if you think there's a better idea for one license we talked about yeah, made yeah. into a game, let us know. Because as you can see, during the back and forth, we're like, oh, that, that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, a lot, a lot of things popping into our heads. You can leave a comment here on YouTube, or you can email us at rollforcrit at gmail.com. And of course, we're on Twitter at rollforcrit and Instagram, Facebook. You can actually find us in every other Quentin Tarantino movie. <laughs> yeah, we're, clear, it's a hidden Easter egg. <laughs> uh, and finally, there's our website, rollforcrit.com, where you can buy board games, find more news and videos and reviews just like this one. It's a great resource for everything that you need. I uh, hope you're having a fun month of June, especially mm -hmm. summertime, but we recommend you stay inside. And, and play board games. <laughs> yeah. It's cooler <laughs> if you have air conditioning. Uh, until next time, I'm Jonathan Estes. I'm Will Keeler, and this has been the Roll for Crit Podcast. <laughs>